The following contains spoilers for the upcoming season of Game of Thrones. Hey guys, today in this video I'm bringing you a confirmed deaths for the upcoming season, deaths that are confirmed by leaked plot and also supported by leaked photos. This list will take a while, so just sit back, relax and enjoy it. Let's start with the death of the Lord of Horn Hell, Randall Tarly. Before we focus on those leaked photos that are confirmed that Randall Tarly will help Jaime to get Highgarden sacked, whereupon he is going to die. Let me just say that Cersei will, in the upcoming season, need to make a new alliance since she killed the only Lannister's strong ally with Wildfire. Well, we don't have to wonder anymore who Cersei's ally is going to be, since it's been confirmed by leaked photos that Randall Tarly is going to be one of new Lannister's allies in the upcoming season who will probably be awarded with place in small council, but a main result of this alliance will be their march on Highgarden. As I've already reported, the result of this alliance is going to be Jaime Lannister leading Lannister army, along with Randall and Deacon Tarly leading their Tarly army. They are going to march on Highgarden, and also from the photos, we've seen the outcome of that battle, which will result with Jaime's and Randall's victory. Which is, by the way, not surprising at all. Jamie and Randall will have numbers. They will outnumber Tyrell's soldiers and both of them have a lot of military experience, especially Randall Tarly who is known as one of the best battle commanders in the Seven Kingdoms. Just before I continue with the events that are going to seal Randall's fate, we have a death of one more major character, the death which is the result of alliance between Lannisters and Tarleys. It's the death of the Queen of Thorns, that of Lady Olena Tyrell, who pledged House Tyrell's forces to Daenerys Targaryen. While this march and the assault on Highgarden is confirmed by leaked photos, according to leaked plot, Jaime will also confront Olena Tyrell while being at Highgarden. According to leaked plot, Lady Olena will admit to Jaime everything about how she and Littlefinger poisoned Joffrey, which will end with Jaime allowing Olena to drink poison and to kill herself before getting captured. As I've already brought you every detail about this in my previous videos, I've also received a lot of positive reviews and comments like for an example, why would Olena admit to Jaime that she killed his firstborn son? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. If you still remember a conversation between Lady Olena and Peter Baelish, which happened in the 7th episode of season 5, a conversation in which the Queen of Thorns threatened Littlefinger and said, I promise you Lord Baelish that our fates are joined. Together we murder the king. If my house should fall, I will have nothing to hide. At a moment in which Jamie and Randall conquered Highgarden, Lady Olena will be aware that her life is over, that she can either kill herself or become a hostage, which would also result with her death eventually. As we all know that Lady Olena is well known for her intellect and sarcasm, which accompanied with her intelligence and her cunning skills, resulted with her being popularly nicknamed the Queen of Thorns. This same lady, Olena Tyrell, aware that her fate is sealed, at a moment in which Jaime is going to confront her at Highgarden, will admit everything to Jaime because, as she said herself, she has nothing to hide once her house falls. As we know, her house had fallen, supported by the fact that Lady Olena will be aware that she is going to die one way or another. Lady Olena will certainly admit to Jaime everything, since that's something what would Olena do, meaning that the leaked plot seems to fit perfectly with mind of Olena Tyrell, which sadly makes leaked plot, once again, being pure truth as many times since it's been leaked. After the conquering Highgarden and after Jaime allowing Lady Olena to drink poison, Jaime and Randall with their armies will march back home, with the carriages full of goods loaded from Highgarden. While they are heading home, Daenerys' army will attack Jaime's and Randall's army, and take an opportunity to fight them on the open field and to avenge her ally, which is confirmed by leaked photos as well. This huge battle will start with a tracky ambush, but during the battle, Daenerys will also appear riding Drogon. How can I know for sure? Well, I obviously didn't see Drogon in leaked photos, but from leaked photos we can see a lot of smoke and bird carriages, which I believe is the result of Drogon's fire breeding. This battle will end with a lot of casualties for both sides, as we can see a lot of dead men on the ground, but it certainly is going to be Daenerys' victory. During this battle, Randall and Deacon Tarly are going to be captured, while Bronn will save Jaime from almost getting killed, whereupon they are going to escape and most likely go to Castle the Rock, which I've already explained you in details in my video about fate of Jaime Lannister, and brought you leaked photos from Trujillo Castle, which will depict Castle the Rock in which we can see Jaime and Bronn on its walls. 
However, while Jamie and Braun will manage to escape in the heat of the battle, Randall and Dickon won't be that lucky. This Daenerys' victory will be very important for her. With that victory, Danny will prove to her enemies that everyone who won't bend the knee and everyone who is going to betray her or her allies will be punished. The explosive leak scene that happened on filming set near Alpartida, the scene that involved our technicians and a burning stuntman, could be an outcome of Daenerys' anger on Tarly's for joining the Lannisters on their march on Highgarden and for killing Lady Olena, who became Danny's ally at the end of previous season. As we can see, there was a huge burst of flame and the stuntman was set on fire. I can't tell for sure which character stuntman was representing, but when he was set on fire, someone yelled, Khaleesi, what sort of witchcraft is this? Now, there are rising a question on these scenes such as, where the great ball of fire came from? And, which character is the stuntman impersonating? In my opinion, the stuntman was impersonating Randall Tarly, who is, in my opinion, going to be burnt alive by Danny's dragon as a result of Randall's betrayal over his sworn house, Tyrell, and for pledging his army to Lannisters. The man that yelled Khaleesi, what sort of witchcraft is this, would be in this theory Randall's son Deacon Tarly, who will after this get a chance to bend the knee and to swear fealty to Daenerys, whereupon he is going to become the new lord of the Horn Hill. By now, I brought you deaths of the Queen of Thorns and the death of Randall Tarly. Now, let's focus on that of the most cunning man in the Seven Kingdoms, the death of Peter Baelish. In League Plot, Dirt stated that in the last episode of the upcoming season, Sansa is going to sentence Littlefinger to death, which Arya will carry out. I've already brought you a theory in which Littlefinger is going to die on his first wedding night after he marries Sansa Stark, the wedding that won't end as Littlefinger wants. By this theory, Wedding will happen upon Littlefinger's threat to Sansa that he will pull the Whale troops back to the Whale unless Sansa marries him. While Jon Snow at this point won't be a Winterfell, Jon will be a Dragonstone. You might think that Littlefinger couldn't command to the Knights of the Whale, but be careful about that. And remember what happened in the fourth episode of season 6. Don't forget that the Knights of the Whale were mobilized only because of Peter, only because of his manipulation over Lord Robin. You might say that other lords from the Vale, such as John Royce, the Lord of Runestone, could decide to stay, to help Jon Snow, no matter Littlefinger's opinion, but you're wrong. If some of the lords from the Vale would obey Peter's commands, they would be sentenced to death by the Lord of the Vale, by Lord Robin, by the Lord with whom can be manipulated and who does as Peter says, the Lord that mobilized the Knights of the Vale only because Littlefinger wanted the lord that almost threw the head of House Royce out of the moon door, and only because Peter won it in the first place, while Littlefinger also spared his life, which means that the fate of lords from the Vale is in Littlefinger's hands. All the lords from the Vale are vassals of House Eren, and have to do as Lord of the Vale, Lord Robin, commands, or otherwise they would be executed. By this theory, Sansa will accept Peter's marriage proposal, and you have to know that at this point Sansa won't be alone at Winterfell. There will also be Arya Stark, who will already meet with the Brotherhood without banners and the Hound, whereupon the Hound is going to tell her the truth about Littlefinger, the truth about Peter's betrayal on Ned Stark. As this theory continues, Sansa will actually marry Peter Baelish, leading to their wedding night. Now, you might wonder why would Littlefinger even want to marry Sansa? Why would he insist that much? Well, we all know his plans, we all know about his goal that he has in his head, the goal and thoughts that he shared with Sansa in season 6 finale, the picture in which he sees him on the Iron Throne and Sansa by his side. Also, Littlefinger wants to marry Sansa because he's still going to try to make her as a rule of Winterfell and the Queen in the North. You might be confused at this point and I understand that, just wait a little bit more. Peter Baelish, from the very beginning, wanted to marry Caitlyn Stark, but upon realizing that it's not going to happen, not even after he killed her husband, Littlefinger has focused his intentions on trying to make Sansa as the heir of Minerfell, which along with his idea to marry her, would give him the Northern Army, the big amount of soldiers that he needs in favor to achieve his goal, in favor to win the Iron Throne. Peter Baelish, the man that orchestrated the assassination of Jon Arryn, which led Ned Stark to become the new Hand of the King, which have been part of his plan as well. Littlefinger's, we can call it genius plan back in season 1, was to kill Jon and Rain with the help of Jon's own wife, 
which he did, and then to make Ned Stark as the new Hand of the King, whereupon he helped Ned to figure out who Joffrey's real father is, since he knew that it would lead Honorable Ned to reveal the truth to everyone else, which led to Ned Stark's beheading. All of this was Littlefinger's game. He threw the Seven Kingdoms into a state of chaos, from which he personally benefited. Now that we know Peter's ultimate plan, which he revealed to Sansa in the gods with the Winterfell, which is to sit on the Iron Throne with Sansa star by his side and to rule the Westeros. As we could see by his face expression, Jon Snow being proclaimed as the king in the north is his main obstacle on his way to accomplish his plan. As Littlefinger said himself, his plan which would lead him to conquer the Iron Throne contains Sansa Stark as his wife and as a queen in the north, which would provide him the support of the north, the necessary amount of the army to have a chance of conquering the Iron Throne which Littlefinger almost accomplished by helping Sansa to retake the Winterfell from Boltons. But Lady Mormon disrupted Baelish's plan to set Sansa as the queen in the north with her magnificent speech, which led other lords to proclaim Jon as a king in the north. Peter Baelish, the man who betrayed Ned Stark in favor to set up a fight between wolves and lions, the man that poisoned Joffrey Lannister on Joffrey's own wedding, with an assistance of Olena Tyrell, to save Sansa Stark, and then that same saved girl, already torched by Lannisters, was handed over to even more sick oppressor Ramsay Bolton, all in favor to turn the North against Boltons and to give him an opportunity to set Sansa as the Queen in the North. The man that first married and then killed Liza Ren, and now is manipulating with her son Robin, all in favor to have his own army, not particularly his, because the Knights of the Vale are under command of Lord Robin, but Robin is, as I've already said, manipulated and is now, we can say, under the command of Littlefinger. As I've already said in one of previous videos, Littlefinger played a big role in John's victory. Actually, if Peter Baelish didn't decide to help John, Ramsay Bolton would have been still alive and would have been in charge of Winterfell while Jon would have been dead. But don't think that Peter Baelish came to save Jon, don't think that he would even come to save Sansa if it wasn't for his own good. All of this Littlefinger played in favor to bring back Winterfell to Sansa Stark, which he managed to accomplish, but his main plan to set Sansa as the role of Winterfell and as a queen in the north, he did not accomplish. The man that made all of these actions, regardless of the pain that he brought to many people, this man, Peter Baelish, will doubtlessly give his best to make his plans come true, which could bring more innocent people in danger of his intrigues. Littlefinger's plan will be either to make a conflict between Jon Snow and the North, or to arrange Jon's death while he will marry Sansa to make sure that this time, after he kills the last man connected to House Stark, after he said Sansa as a role of Winterfell to make sure that Sansa is his wife, the wife which he will, by his plan, manipulate with, just as he is manipulating with Lord Robin, which would bring him the Northern Army, leading him one step further on conquering the Iron Throne. But Littlefinger won't be aware that Sansa is manipulating him, that Sansa found out from Arya that he is responsible for her father's beheading. That's the moment in which the wedding between Sansa and Peter is going to happen. The moment which will lead to their wedding night, which is conceived by two Stark sisters by Sansa and Arya. While Littlefinger and Sansa are being alone in their room, while Peter Baelish is convinced that his picture of them together has finally came true, that very moment, by this theory, Sansa will put a dagger down Littlefinger's throat, the moment in which Sansa will enter the room, the moment in which we have two Sansas. The moment in which Arya is taking off Sansa's face while holding a dagger on Peter's throat, whereupon Arya is killing him while Sansa is watching. I'm aware that most of you right now are questioning the accuracy of this theory. I'm aware that most of you think that Arya can't wear someone's face if that person is still alive. But as I've already said, you're wrong. Back in the final episode of season 5, there was a scene in which Joaquin Hagar wore Arya's face, the scene in which Joaquin poisoned himself, the scene in which Arya became blind for a while. That scene confirms that the faceless man assassins can wear the face of a person that is not dead, a person that is still alive, which makes this theory in which Arya is using Sansa's face and is killing Littlefinger, while Sansa is entering the room, much more possible. And I have to admit, this theory would fit perfectly to the Game of Thrones series. In my opinion, this theory would come true, considering the previous events and deaths, mostly considering the writing of co-creators David Benioff and Dan Weiss. This theory also might not come true, 
There are a lot of possibilities on how Littlefinger might be killed, but one is certain, Peter Baelish won't survive the upcoming season. These are only three deaths that will happen in the upcoming season, but there are also many more which I'm going to bring you guys in the following days. In conclusion, I suggest you to brace yourself, because this is only a part one, there are at least two more videos about the deaths in the upcoming season to come. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did please make sure to subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace!